Splatoon 3 has a lot of depth to it, but honestly, most of the hidden texts this game has aren't that difficult to learn. So today, I not only want to break down what those texts are, but how you can do them, and hopefully these can become more common knowledge. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and let me know your favorite of these texts in the comments. Let's start with probably the most well-known one, substrafing. If you ever go into the training room and try to do a 180 turn, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of considerable delay. If you swim in one direction, let go of the squid form, repress it, and turn the other one, it's a little better, but there's still a rather visible delay. However, by holding down the sub open button when you go out and back into the ink, the lag is drastically reduced, and this is what's known as substrafing. It takes a little bit to get used to holding the sub open button down, but once you get the handle of it, you can turn and move much faster than you would be normally, and this can be great for things like evading bombs, for example. This works for literally every weapon in the game besides the Rainmaker. For that weapon, you'll have to do what's called charge strafing, which is honestly even easier. You're just holding down the ZR button, going out of ink, and then going back in it. The charge gets cancelled and you're able to move pretty much immediately. This is great to know in general for Rainmakers, since you're a big target, and it allows you to fake out cancelling your shots rather than committing to one, having a bunch of end lag, and getting shot. It does take a bit to get used to this tech, but once you implement it, this game flows so much faster. And fun fact, this was originally a glitch. Some sub weapons in Splatoon 1 couldn't do this, like Ink Mine and Seeker, and mine even in Splatoon 2 couldn't do this until they patched it into the game. Really rare to see Nintendo actually make a glitch a staple mechanic, but this is an example of it. While we're on movement, let's talk about stealth swimming. This is a very simple technique trying to replicate the effects of Ninja Squid, but without the ability itself. Basically, you're just holding slightly forward on the stick instead of all the way, and if you do it slow enough, you'll move very slowly, but also very stealthily, and that little trail that you make is going to be much harder to see, and the ripples won't be visible. This is great if you're already hiding and just trying to reposition a little bit without giving away your location. Next up is ledge climbing. If you ever climb a wall by mashing A to do it faster, you'll notice that sometimes you can just jump on the top of the wall and have a little bit of lag. It's actually much faster to let go of ZL once you're around the top of the wall and repress it to be on the floor and swim through that. So if you have a surface painted on the top of an inkable wall, you can use that to go a bit faster. Finally for the movement is squid surge cancelling. Once you commit to a surge up a wall, you don't have to stick with it. You can cancel it in a number of meaningful ways, mainly shooting, throwing a sub up and letting go of squid form, or wall jumping off it, all of which are great options. So don't commit to it if it looks like the squid surge might end up getting punished. This also lets you use the momentum of the squid surge to be able to go up and then roll off it quickly to attack, which could be a bit faster. Though that's really only applicable on Flounder because this game doesn't like cannibal walls. Let's talk about some weapon specific tech. This one applies to a lot of the shooters, which is how their RNG works. If you start shooting with a splatter shot or a 52, you'll notice that your first few shots will be very accurate and reliable in hitting the dummy. However, these weapons do have accuracy problems. The way it works is the longer you shoot without being an ink for a set amount of time, the more inaccurate your weapon gets up to a certain point. This means even something like a 96, which has some horrid RNG, will have the first three shots be insanely accurate. Because of this, mixing up shooting with a bit of movement in squid form to reset that RNG is very important, and shooters have some of the lowest startup and end lag in the entire game, so it very much promotes this. Obviously, some weapons like Splash don't struggle with this, though, so it's not a thing for every shooter, of course. Another thing worth noting for shooters, but can also apply to a few other weapons like dualies, is effective painting tech. Basically, this is a way to paint a bit more efficiently. Say, if you're charging your special, for example. You'll notice with, say, the end zap, if you shoot and strafe to the left, there'll be a good bit of holes in your paint trail that aren't painted efficiently. You can actually make this significantly better by moving up and down slightly while you paint strafing to the side. And this will paint more efficiently, not only covering areas better, but also charging your special better. Efficient paint is also useful if you're using, say, your spawn paint to charge a special, since you want to be able to leave a bit of it for later in case you need it to defend. Next up, let's cover a weapon that's got a lot of tech rollers. First off, on an ink rail, you can horizontal flick off it if you just drop off the rail, but there's a better method to do it while staying on the rail, particularly useful for dynamo. Basically, you're just letting go of ZL and pressing B. If you do it too fast, you'll do the vertical, but if you delay it just enough, you'll do a jumping horizontal and have enough time to re-grab the rail. Another useful tech is squid rolling with a horizontal flick. 
this gives you a lot of momentum while doing it. The way to pull this one off is much more simple. Just press ZR while doing the normal squid roll inputs, and you'll do a horizontal flip. This one you can't delay a little bit, otherwise you'll do a vertical flip. Speaking of the vertical flip, it's a little bit weird, but you actually do just slightly more damage if you aim a little bit lower to your opponent. This sounds small, but sometimes this is the difference between getting a kill and doing 99.5 damage. Finally, let's talk about two easy uses when rolling. First off, say you're on the top of Flounder Heights, and you need to paint the wall to get back on. One thing you could do very easily is jump, horizontal flick, or vertical flick, and then hold out the roller and you'll be able to paint the wall as you descend, saving a lot of time. And finally, if you need to keep a rail active, don't waste time flicking at it forever. Just roll in a circle and you'll basically have the whole thing painted instantly. For another weapon with a few specific techs, let's talk about the dualies. There are three things here worth noting. First off, you can use your sub weapon in between your rolls. I see a lot of people forget about this and always throw it after the second roll, but honestly, sometimes it's way better to do it between, such as with Gluga to set up your wall before rolling behind it. Another useful thing to know is during your turret mode, you can actually left peek. Now, for every weapon in the game, you hold it on your right side. So if you stand near a wall and try to shoot, it's easier to cover the left half of your body. This is a technique known as right side peeking, and you'll see a lot, especially with chargers. However, when dualies are in their turret mode, the weapon's actually slightly to the left, so you can left side peek if you're in turret mode. Finally, is a tech exclusive to the dually sculptures. Because you have slides instead of rolls that keep you standing, you can actually jump right after doing your roll by releasing the left stick entirely. This allows you to keep some of the accuracy from the roll mode, and it is a nice movement mix-up, especially since you can roll immediately after to make up for the delay jumping normally has when descending to the ground. This tech admittedly takes a lot of practice to get used to, but it is very satisfying to pull off. You know what's cooler than some main weapon techs, though? Special. So let's talk about a few unique things you can do. First off, Zipcaster. You can actually Zipcaster near a graded surface, jump, and immediately press squid form to jump in that squid form and go through grading. Something else that could be useful for both Zipcaster and Inkjet is manipulating your landing. If you jump onto a wall or an ink rail and then eventually get off it and don't hit the floor, your landing will be where that location is. A useful example of this could be on Flounder Heights. You can actually go to the top of the rail, pop your inkjet there, and then you can shoot and already be on the left roof, but you'll recall safely all the way back to your snipe. For Ultra Stamp, something people don't utilize enough is jumping to slow your momentum in rush mode. This has the most obvious use of preventing you from dying to the Rainmaker Shield when you're trying to pop it, but can also be useful against certain objects, like breaking Big Bubbler's shield. Even one of the worst specials in the game has some interesting tech. If you use slider at a diagonal angle extremely close to a ledge, you'll actually desync and not be exactly where the path indicates, which can catch some people off guard. For the killer well, sometimes it's actually better to not lock onto people and shoot it parallel to the ground. So for example, here on Scorch Gorge, you use whales, and then once the first ones are traveling, you jump up the block, and then the second ones launch, and you're at the top. This will leave all six whales traveling parallel to the ground. This can also work with any form of slope. It takes a bit to get the timing down, but having a way to just basically clear the entire ground level is very useful on some of these maps. Finally is the Crab Tank. It has a very infamous one-shot combo, where you use the explosion paired with the normal fire to instantly delete someone across the map. This is usually useful if you're in ball mode. You just pop out of it, aim your AoE shot, and immediately follow it up with a standard fire shot. It's also worth noting for Crab Tank in general that standard fire does not take away for your area of effect fire mode. So if you're doing area of effect shots, you can mix in a bit of standard fire in between for a little bit of extra value. All right, that's all the special stuff. Let's go back to a few other Main weapons. Chargers can use their charge hold to get a bit of extra jump height, sometimes useful for sniping people under a ledge. Hi, Lucy here. I've been a scoped E-Leader main for around seven years now, and here's something you might not have known about. As you may know, the scope variants of chargers give you an added benefit of looking through a scope while you aim. Since the scope mechanic actually puts you into first person mode, there are some shots that are way easier to make because of this. Take for instance some of these examples. Obviously, these can be done with unscoped chargers, but it is way easier to do with their scope counterparts. 
Blasters have some absurdly horrible jump RNG, but once you start descending, it becomes much more tolerable. So sometimes it's better to delay your shot and shoot after you start to descend. Splatanas have the ability to dash slash, but once you dash, you can still aim where the actual slash itself comes from. This is called dodge dashing. While this isn't easy by any means, even if the attack misses, you still get the movement from the dash, so it is worth going for sometimes. Torpedo has an entirely separate mode if you don't lock onto opponents. By rolling or bouncing it, it'll basically be a slightly larger but more expensive burst bomb. Splat Bomb can also take advantage of rolling though, since its detonation time depends on how long it was on the ground. For Splash Wall, the distance you throw it can actually vary depending on how high or low you're looking with your camera. This can help you hit certain locations or throw the wall closer to you if you need it. Finally, Sprinkler can actually work to damage the Rainmaker Shield. Just put it on the floor near the shield and inflate it a little bit and then the entire Sprinkler will pop it. All right. Let's wrap it up with a few more. Sticks users. If you need to turn 180 degrees, due to the limited turning speed, even on maximum sensitivity, you can actually just hold a direction with the left stick and then press Y and camera reset. This is only really useful if you need to 180 and you play on lower sensitivities, but it might be nice. You can actually squid roll going straight forwards. To do this, you're basically having your control stick slightly to the left or right and flicking it about 90 degrees forward. It takes a bit of practice to get used to the flick, but once you get it down, it's pretty simple. You can actually hear your opponent sharking an ink. It's a bit difficult to tell, but here it is in recon. In an actual match when there's music and a bunch of specials going off, it's a bit more tricky, but if you listen really carefully, sometimes you can catch some sharkers off guard. Whenever you use any special in the game, it automatically refills your ink tank. The main use for this is if you have a sub weapon that you can use, you should probably do it. Place a beacon before throwing your tactic cooler. Throw a fizzy bomb before pressing your booyah bomb. You can even do stuff like throw wave breaker as a range blaster player to get enough ink to try to go for a clutch direct. Finally, and most importantly, passive special advantage. For every single ranked mode in the game, you passively build special based off the objective. I did an entire video on this back in Splatoon 2, and it's the exact same in this game, so I'd recommend checking it out. With that less tech out of the way though, that's every small thing I could think of that you should know. Let me know if you guys have any more of them, and I'll see you all next time.